I'm walking along the Icknild Way on my way to the summit of Deacon Hill to my next collecting feature. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes you have to, or well, I do, I have to stop and just be totally and utterly amazed by where I am. This is my working environment. <laughs> so the, have you ever w stopped and looked around? This particular road, the Icknild Way, this is the oldest road in Great Britain that you can still use. If you remember from school, there was the Stone Age, then there was the Bronze Age, then there was the Iron Age. This is an Iron Age road. Archaeologists have dug up artifacts along this road, 6,000 years old. <laughs> So people have been walking along this road for 6,000 years. There were still woolly mammoths in the islands on a, off Alaska. Still woolly mammoths walking around in, on Earth when people were using this road. It's just amazing. This is also one of the original King's Highways in uh, England. There was the Foss Way, Ermine Street, Watling Street, and this one. And in the 11th and 12th century, so that's over a thousand years ago, you, the king would protect you if you were walking along these roads. They were all paved and you couldn't, you know, if you, if you went onto another road, you may get robbed or worse. <laughs> but on this road, the king would offer his protection. So this was a king's highway. But anyway, this just, you, you do have to stop every now and again and wonder at the, the places you visit. Even if you're just on a day like this, walking around the countryside. Anyway, enough waffle. <laughs> As you know from watching my other videos, I actually do waffle on sometimes, so just fast forward over that bit. Today I'm going to go, go for a walk through the countryside and unusually for me, I'm not going to take a compass. I've only got a map. All the information that you need for these types of walks, which are relatively low level, you need just the map. The information is all there. Now this is number six in a series of videos that I've made that explain how to navigate just using a map without using a compass. So if you haven't watched those, it may be a good idea. Or if you just want to watch this, and then if there's any techniques that I use that you don't fully understand, then uh, just have a look at the relevant video. Now I'll, I'll drop this onto your map so you can see the route that I'm going to take today. Well, from here in Pegson, we're going to go along the Chiltern Way and then pick up the Icknelled Way up Deacon Hill and then we're going to drop down to the uh, Pegson Hills. Now, if you remember from the Map Scales video, or if you haven't watched it, <laughs> there's blue lines on Ordnance Survey map and they form squares. On this 1 to 25,000 map, the blue square squares are one kilometre each side. Now using that information we can actually work out today how far we're actually going to walk. It works out at 5.6 kilometers or about three and a half miles so it's not too far. So it's time to set off. Now the first thing to do is which way do I go? Do I go that way or do I go this way? Behind me, as you can see, there's buildings on the side of the road. So I can see on this section here, there are buildings on the right-hand side of the road. So I need to keep them on my right. Okay, then I need to go up here, keep looking at the map, and I need to turn left at the next row of buildings. And the track is going to curve round to the left, uh, sorry, to the right. It's then going to curve round to the left. And just after that second curve, is where I need to turn sharp right onto the Chiltern Way. <laughs> People just riding past. Now, those are my collecting features, the, all the turns and the curves. What's my catching feature? If you remember from the video, I said the catching features, something that tells you, you may have gone slightly wrong. Catching features need to be obvious. Now, all, these uh, curves and turns and everything I've done. Nowhere is the track actually straight. So let's have a look at the map again. I'll drop this onto your screen. And if you look, if I miss the right-hand turn to the Chiltern Way, then there is a long straight track straight in front of me. So if I find myself going in a straight line, I need to stop and have a check of the map. Don't forget catching features don't necessarily say you've gone, you know, you're lost. <laughs> it just says stop, look at the map and have a quick check because something doesn't seem right. Okay, then I 
keep the buildings on my right and I'm going to head in that direction and let's see if we can uh, find all our collecting features. So here's our first collecting feature. As you remember from the map, I said that the track should curve round to the right and there it is in front of me, there's the long curve. So it says that I'm, I'm going in the right direction. Just on that point, if you're out with a family or ramblers group or something like that, somebody has to read the map. Somebody has to know how to do this. Otherwise, you'll just end up walking around in circles. Anyway, I'm going to carry on now. So I'm looking after this one. My next collecting feature is a sharper turn to the left. And then just after that, there should be a sharp right, right hand turn, a sort of 90 degree turn. And don't forget my uh, catching feature, long straight road. I'll carry on and uh, we'll have another chat in a moment. Okay, so I've done the, the turns in the track and there's the long straight section that would have been my catching feature. If I had started going down there, I would have known there was something wrong. And I can see there's a sort of track through the field here leading off in that direction. Now to make sure that this actually is going in the right direction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to orient my map by pointing it down the long straight section. So here we go. So there we go. That's that. And looking at the track, I'll drop this onto your screen so you can see what I'm doing. So here we are. So there's the long straight section there. And that um, track across the field looks to be going in the right direction. So that's probably our track. So that's that. Now the next section I'm going to use, so I've used, again, I'm going to use catching and collecting features, but I'm also going to use a handrail. Do you, if, you, if you're not sure about what handrails are, go back and watch that video. So I'm going to go across here. Now I'll drop this onto your map again. I'll drop this onto your screen again. I'm going to walk across this area and then I should go through a wall or a fence or something. Just after that, there should be a wooded area on my left hand side. So those are collecting features. And I'm actually going to handrail the wall or fence that should be on my right hand side. Now, here's the thing, how do I know when to turn? If you look, once again, I'll drop this back onto your screen, sorry. If you look at the, uh, the wall or fence or whatever it is, you see how it curves round to the right, and that is where I should turn left. And so I'm going to handrail that, and then I'm going to turn left just when it uh, turns to the right. Let's see. <laughs> Keep going, we'll get there in the end. So here is the change of direction of the fence at this point. If you look, it goes in a straight line that way. And from here, it goes in a straight line in that direction. So this is our collecting feature. And it tells us now that we have to turn left here. Now, just as a quick by the by, <laughs> when you're in with a family or ramblers group or whatever, you wouldn't, you wouldn't actually do something like this. You wouldn't check every couple of, you know, 100 meters or every 50 meters, like I'm doing today. But <laughs> bear in mind, this is um, an instruction video, so I'm, I'm going a little bit over the top. So you wouldn't check, well, I turn here, I turn. Somebody needs to know the way, but they wouldn't check the map every 30 seconds like I'm doing. But, you know, bear with me, this, this is a YouTube uh, instruction video, so you don't have to do it like this. Anyway, I'm going to turn left here and uh, carry on and see where we get to. What a lovely day. These are the Chiltern Hills, by the way, in Southeast England. It's the type of area that photographers come around to take photographs for the, all the uh, tourist brochures that you see. And as you can see, it actually does look like that. Let's carry on. <laughs> So I've come to the end of the footpath that goes across this field. And what I need to do now is just to check, I think I need to turn that way, but just to do a quick check, I'm going to rotate my map, point it along the, the footpath that I've just done. And it tells me that the track that I need to take goes in that direction. So if you haven't watched the orienting your map video, um, it's one of those things that, 
people don't pay much attention to because <laughs> it's, it's considered to be not very technical but it's actually really useful also we're going to now walk along here and we're going to go if you I'll, I'll put this on your map i'm sorry i'll put this onto your screen we're going to go past an enormous blue duck i think that's a duck anyway now in the very first video in this series i think it's called what is a map i said that certain things or most things on a map are actually denoted by symbols so it's we're not going to go past a 50 meter high duck the blue duck just means um, it's, it's the british ordnance survey symbol for nature reserve what i also said in that video is you should learn what all the symbols mean but don't try and learn them all if you're doing a route like this it may be an idea before you set off just to go to the index and say right what does that blue duck mean what does the uh, letter p in a blue box mean that sort of thing so learn the symbols that are relevant to the uh, the route that you're doing today and then next week if you do a different route you'll learn some more symbols and eventually you will know them all um, that's that so i'm going to follow this track up now and then it gets a bit more complicated because there's uh, lots of track junctions and we need to make sure that we get the right or we head off in the right direction so this is another track junction and this is where it starts to get I'm not going to say complicated, I'm going to say more interesting. <laughs> so there's a track that way which we've uh, just walked up. There's another track going in this direction and there's another one directly behind me. So which track do we take? Simple. What we do is we orient our map. So the track that we've just taken up is in a straight line there. And this tells me that it's not that one, it's rather it's this one. So we need to walk up here just for a short while and then we're going to take the Ignald Way Trail, which should come off to our right-hand side. We carry on. So I've just come along the ridge on Deacon Hill. I went to the summit, and which is behind me, and then from Deacon Hill, I came all the way down and followed the tracks. And now I'm hand railing this uh, this fence. So that's the virtually the end of the walk. It's just a few hundred meters down the uh, across the field to back to where I started from. So it's just to show that you don't have to use a compass. Anybody can go out in the country and navigate safely, providing that you look at the map. Lots of people have a map, and if you ask them where it is, oh, it's in my rucksack. Well, every now and again, take it out and have a look. Now, I'm not for one minute saying that you don't have to use a compass in the more rugged areas of, of the world. But on an area like this, where you're only following tracks that are marked on a map, you, you, you actually, you, do, you really don't need to. It just overcomplicates things. And the idea is just to go out and have a nice walk in the countryside. So hopefully you now understand how to navigate just using a map. So thanks for watching. I'm going to carry on walking now.